My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 3,723 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Hey everyone, looks like the video I did on the five new features in Paris that you're going to love was quite the success. And uh, I said, you know what, if the people like this video, then I'm a man of the people, so I'm going to give you some more of what you like. So uh, let's start off today with uh, more new features in Paris. And let's get to uh, number one here, which is our rich text variable. Um, so in service catalog, uh, they created a couple of new variables, and one of them is the rich text variable. Um, so if you're familiar with creating record producers, um, which is under service catalog, and I just typed in RD space PRO to get to record producers, um, we can go into one of them. Now, what I did was I took the out of the box, uh, they call it a new hire form, I think, and it has demo in parentheses. So I just changed the name of it to new team member form. And I created uh, a couple of rich text labels down here. And basically what this allows us to do is create uh, labels that have HTML um, within the actual label itself. So if we take a look at the one of the ones that I created, it's called um, uh, Jungle. And it's Welcome to the Jungle is our rich text statement here. And basically, you know, it's just like your, you know, uh, your rich text editor that you find in a notification. Uh, we'll notice here that I did a 24 point on the font size and then I, I did it on bold. Um, if we go ahead and take a look at the actual item itself, see here it kind of shapes up nicely and also it took the centering um, that I put inside of the, uh, the item. So if we take a look at um, the variable one more time right here, we'll notice that I centered it, right? So I aligned it um, using that and it came out nicely here. Now, another, um, another nice feature about the rich text variable, or, or both of the variables I'm about to mention, um, is that they, uh, they do respond to UI policies. So I created a second rich text variable. Um, and before I show you the UI policy, which I create on this form, uh, we'll talk about the second uh, variable because they're kind of going to go hand in hand here. So that's the attachment variable, which is cool. So like how many times have we created record, I mean, I don't know how many record producers you've created over the last five years, but I've maybe created like a hundred or so, and I always wanted an attachment variable. So thanks to the people at ServiceNow for creating this. Um, it was a long time in coming, and it's pretty awesome um, what they've done here. So I created one called Seating Chart, just going off of that theme of the new higher onboarding uh, item that they have out there. <clears throat> and then we'll notice here that I actually was able to add a tool tip please upload the offer letter. Now you're probably asking me like, where is it here? So I just created a UI policy that when we change this to office based, that the seating chart variable with the attachment that's required um, pops up. And we'll notice here that it says required. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add one. So I'm just gonna add here um, PNG file and then one thing I did with the policy also was that I wanted to test it out and see if it would clear uh, this value here if I changed it back because a lot of times people make mistakes when they're entering forms um, and sure enough it did. So that was kind of cool. And then um, the other, uh, let's see here, or if we want to take a look at the UI policy, I promise I'll get to that in a second. Uh, I think I lost it here, hold on. Yeah, we'll take a look at the UI policy right here. Yes, there we go. Excellent. So if we open this new window uh, right here, we'll see that I created the, and, and I apologize that I did this in a couple of different app scopes. So uh, I might have to switch app scopes throughout this video, but hopefully it won't slow us down. So I created one to say if um, the location type is not office based, then basically, um, here's what we wanted to do for the seating chart. We don't want it to make it mandatory. We don't want to make it visible. And then also, we, we, um, we want to clear it out, right? So it does the opposite um, on load. So uh, that's cool. And then I created one called M cube, um, which also, I don't know why it's not showing, but it was supposed to respond to the policy too. 
um, basically when we and maybe I need to refresh the form and let me try it one more time and if it doesn't work no big deal but um, I got it working before so that way it would respond so let's just do this yeah there we go welcome to the cube farm is what it says so uh, again you know thanks to everyone at service now for creating this I think it's you know pretty awesome uh, development and a long time coming at that too uh, one of the things I tried doing also was like to get rid of like this right here, the new team member form, uh, this label here. Um, the only issue I had was that um, when I was searching for the item, I couldn't find it. But then I added something to the meta um, to be able to the meta tags, if you're familiar with those to great to get the item to come up. So, um, you know, we, we could go through that, right, taking through this out. Like if we just wanted to have um, the label show there and we can go ahead and refresh this. Hopefully it's saved. I know I got that error there for the session and it looks like it did not. So maybe I can try that one more time. And if not, we can move on and maybe it'll let me do it. Let me click in here and it might be because I'm not in the proper app scope I'm trying to make this update. Okay. Let's try that one more time. See if I can save it. If it gives me an error, then we can just move on. Okay, so it looks like it cleared out here. And now the form should be blank. And then you're probably saying like, okay, well then how do, like, how are they able to search on it? Well, I just put in the meta tag of my name. It looks like nothing's coming up here. So that might be one of the draw. It looks like something came up, but I'm not sure if that's the form, but okay. So there's no, like if there's no label there, then they're not gonna have a, you know, something really to click on with a label. So uh, I'm not sure if there's a workaround to that, but that's one of my observations. So one of the other cool things was that now they have email client and agent workspace. So if you're not familiar with the agent workspace, you know, how do we get there? Um, you can type in CE space home. This will be your agent workspace home. It'll pop you out into a window, kind of like, like when you come in here originally, it'll be something like this. And then what we can do is open up an incident record. I created one um, before, so we don't have to go through the motions of doing that. And then we'll notice here, compose email. So now the email client will come up and we're off to the races. So that way we can do our email um, within agent workspace, which is really cool. Um, actually had um, you know customer feedback that you know we were trying to use agent workspace and I don't believe they were able to we, we weren't able to get this going because it wasn't a feature before um, so they ended up using the back end instead of using agent workspace uh, next thing is uh, system address filter I put email here in parentheses because there's also something called I didn't want you to get it confused with email address filter just wanted to denote that these are two separate things so we have to create our email address filter, which you're probably familiar with doing that. So under system mailboxes, uh, we have here our email address filters, and you're probably familiar with, with setting these up. Now, but what the system address filters allow us to do is, and we can just take a look at the email address filter first that I created. So I created one called Blockbuster, and basically the domain here, it's a uh, blacklist, right, is the type, the domain of blo blockbuster.com. And here we could do exceptions if we want certain email addresses to um, be allowed to, to pass through. Now the system address filter will allow us to say, okay, inbound or outbound, you know, how do we want to blacklist this thing? And then we add the email address filter down here. And then here are the rules. I don't want to really get too much into um, reading all these to you. So you can read them at your own leisure if you're setting these up. Um, I didn't test this out, by the way. Obviously, Blockbuster.com probably doesn't exist anymore, so um, I wasn't able to test it out. So if you have any findings, uh, feel free to post the comments um, in the space below. All right, so copy a mobile applet. So I'm not sure how many of you have um, you know, configured mobile apps before. Um, I did with a previous customer. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty cool experience, actually. And also, by the way, they're going to be phasing out the classic version. So that classic mobile app, um, that's going away. Now, one thing to note is that there are only two types where you can do the copy function. So I went into Studio right here into this application. Um, and then I created two. One that was a non-list applet. 
and uh, yeah this is a new chart applet uh, and then you'll see here that there is no copy button there or UI action as we refer to it but here for the list and also I believe it's like employee directory they have this make a copy function so it's kind of cool so you can click on uh, make a copy and then I'm not sure if it'll make it because of the app scope thing but um, uh, bring up a new new list and then you know you can go ahead and and do your thing there and go from there okay so um, the next one which I thought was like the coolest out of them all so far is like sending an SMS through flow designer so first thing that I want to note here is that like it took me like 20 times um, to get this thing working correctly and I and the reason why was because I had to create a channel in my notifications so like if we back out of here and we go into our settings um, I created a channel here that has uh, the type of email and then here we have the email address and this would be the cell number and then it also asks you to select like your in, in another channel here I had a, in the SMS one it asked me who my provider is so I set up both but I believe that this one here was the key one for um, making this thing work because I kept testing it out and I was getting an error, um, something to the effect of like cannot find um, this this object or, or something to that um, something of that nature. I don't, I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, but you know, we could test one now if we want. But basically, the way I have this set up here is remember our pill structure. And if you haven't worked in Flow Designer before, um, and also I should go to the trigger first. Sorry about that. So I'm just basically saying, you know, anytime a problem record is updated, I didn't do any filters here um, just for testing, right? Like later on, you could add filters, like if you want it to be priority one. And then here we have our send SMS. And I did uh, trigger, and where am I getting trigger from? Right here, we have trigger. Now, if we look at our problem record, then we can go down to the assign to and just, you know, you just drag it over into this um, this field right here for recipients. And then in the message, I want to do part static text and then I want to do part dynamic just to see if this would work. And it came once I um, resolve this issue here with the notification and the channels and everything, um, you know, uh, it worked fine and it was uh, pretty awesome just to see it come through and everything and I thought to myself you know what Th this is awesome if you can get this to you know send on the you know to someone's mobile device so uh, as you can see here it's captured uh, in the sent system email box so if you need to go look later and just make sure that it's sent um, you know there you go right that's where you would go do it um, so then moving on uh, I found another one called report aliases. Now this wasn't mentioned, whoops, this wasn't mentioned in the ServiceNow documentation. That's why I put an asterisk here because this might be a hidden feature. This might be something they're gonna do down the line. Maybe they let this one out of the box by accident uh, when they did the upgrade. So I tried to <laughs> take a stab at it and create my own report alias thinking, you know what, maybe I can get it to work. So here's what I did. I went into um, aliases under reports and right here we have our the one that I created and when we if we were to click into it and when you click new it's gonna ask for a table I did the field here of assignment group as you can see here all these are coming off the incident table um, I took a report um, that was a multi-level pivot so you can only do two types apparently uh, you can either do multi-level pivot or you can do list. And how do I know that? Basically what I did was configure dictionary and then I looked at um, the filters there. So the reference qualifier. Uh, so if we go in here and click configure dictionary and hopefully it doesn't give me an error. Is it going to go? And also I named the alias JM. So if we look at here, our reference spec right here. So we'll see here a type of multi-level pivot um, or list. So then when we go back out, I'm not sure if it's gonna take me back out. Yeah, it looks like it took me back to the record producer, that's fine. Um, then when I created the value of assignment group, uh, when we go in here, we'll see here 
field alias, so assignment group is what I'm going for. Now I tried to put in the label for the assignment group, um, and I think I was trying like one of the out of the box ones, like database or something, and it wouldn't let me save it. So then I said, okay, well maybe this is a sys ID thing, because looking at, you know, maybe it wants the, the value, right, not the label. So I put in the sys ID, it let me save it. Okay, fine. So I thought, okay, ball game, right? And then the alias I wanted to put in was JM. So instead of saying database, it'll, it'll list it as JM. And I was trying to make this thing work and I, and I couldn't. And then, uh, you know, I looked up here in the system properties. I just did a contains alias and I just found this, um, this sysprop here. Now with the sysprop, I tried to go in um, modify it, you know, that, that business rule runs telling you, you know, it's got a protection policy on it. I tried deleting this thing uh, using a background script and a fixed script. Couldn't delete the thing because I want to just recreate it with a value of true. W no dice wouldn't let me do it. So if anyone's out there that can figure out how to make this thing work, I, you know, I think it would be a pretty cool feature. So uh, just to review, here's what we went over today. Um, so we have our rich text variable, our attachment variable, uh, email client agent workspace, our system address filter, copy and applet, our send SMS and flow designer, which I thought was the coolest, and then our report alias. All right. Um, if you felt like you learned something today, go feel free to click like below. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. My name is Jason Miller, founder of AspenNow Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.